Picture this. You're standing in the dark, staring up at a sky so vast it feels like it could swallow you whole. Every pinprick of light up there is a story, a history, a piece of the universe's ancient diary. For centuries, we've gazed at the stars, piecing together their secrets like detectives with half a puzzle. We thought we had a decent idea of how it all began. A fiery Big Bang, a chaotic stew of particles, then a slow, patient crawl towards stars, galaxies, and eventually us. It was a tidy story, one we told ourselves with confidence. But then, we built something extraordinary, a machine that doesn't just look at the stars but peers through time itself. The James Webb Space Telescope. And what it saw didn't just add a new chapter to our cosmic tale. It tore the book apart and handed us a completely different story. One that's thrilling, unsettling, and so bizarre it might just change how we see everything. Let's take a step back. Imagine you're looking into a mirror, but instead of your reflection, you see the universe when it was a newborn, barely a few hundred million years old. That's what Webb was built to do. Its golden mirrors, sharper than anything we've ever sent into space, were designed to capture light that's been traveling for over 13 billion years. That's light from the dawn of existence from a time when the universe was supposed to be a messy toddler, stumbling through its first steps. We expected to see faint smudges of light, wispy clouds of hydrogen, maybe the earliest hints of stars flickering to life. Simple, raw, unformed. That's what the textbook said we'd find. But when Webb turned its gaze to a dark, quiet corner of the sky, it didn't find a toddler. It found a fully grown adult, dressed to the nines, strutting across the cosmic stage like it owned the place. What did it see? A galaxy, not a hazy blob or a scattering of gas, but a full-blown, jaw-dropping galaxy with spiral arms curling like ribbons of starlight, dense clusters of stars orbiting in perfect harmony, and a monstrous black hole sitting at its heart like a cosmic king. This wasn't a galaxy in the making. It was done, finished, thriving, and it wasn't alone. As Webb kept looking, more of these cosmic giants emerged from the shadows, each one a masterpiece of structure and complexity, existing at a time when the universe was barely 400 million years old. To put that in perspective, that's like finding a skyscraper complete with electricity and Wi-Fi in a world where humans just figured out fire. It shouldn't be possible. Our models of the universe said galaxies need billions of years to form, to grow, to settle into their elegant shapes. But these, they were already there, fully dressed, like they'd skipped the awkward teenage phase entirely. Now, let's talk about why this is so wild. The story we've told ourselves about the universe goes like this. After the Big Bang, everything was a hot, chaotic mess. Particles floated around, slowly clumping together under gravity's gentle tug. Over millions of years, those clumps became clouds, then stars, then galaxies. It's a slow burn, a cosmic marathon. But what Webb found was like stumbling across a marathon runner who crossed the finish line before the starting gun even fired. These galaxies weren't just formed, they were mature. They had spiral arms, stable orbits, and chemical signatures that blew our minds. When scientists analyzed the light from these galaxies, they found elements like oxygen, carbon, even iron. These aren't the kind of things you find lying around in a baby universe. They're forged in the hearts of massive stars released when those stars explode as supernovas. That process takes time, hundreds of millions, if not billions, of years. Yet here they were, in galaxies younger than a half billion years, acting like they'd been through multiple generations of stellar life and death. It's as if the universe hit fast forward when we weren't looking. And then there's the black hole. Oh, this one's a doozy. At the center of one of these ancient galaxies, Webb spotted a supermassive black hole, weighing in at over a billion times the mass of our sun. Let that sink in. A billion suns. In today's universe, that's impressive but plausible. Black holes grow over billions of years, gobbling up gas, dust, and stars like cosmic vacuum cleaners. But in a universe that's only 400 million years old? That's not just unlikely, it's absurd. It's like finding a 30-year-old oak tree in a garden you planted last week. The math doesn't add up. Even if you stretch the models, crank up the feeding rates, and assume the black hole was eating nonstop from the moment the universe blinked into existence, it still shouldn't be that big. So how did it get there? 
Some scientists are tossing around wild ideas, primordial black holes born from weird density fluctuations right after the Big Bang, or maybe dark matter doing some heavy lifting we don't yet understand. But these aren't tweaks to the story. They're entirely new plot lines. What makes this even crazier is the patterns. When scientists fed Webb's data into deep learning algorithms, they noticed something eerie. The galaxies weren't just scattered randomly. Their shapes, their distributions, their orbits, they followed a kind of cosmic geometry. Picture a spiral, not just in one galaxy's arms, but across entire clusters, stretching across billions of light years. It's like the universe was built on a blueprint, a fractal logic that repeats from the smallest star clusters to the largest galactic webs. Some of these patterns looked hauntingly familiar, almost like the golden spiral you see in seashells or sunflowers. It's not just beautiful, it's unsettling. Why would the early universe, chaotic and unformed, follow a design so precise it feels almost deliberate? Is it just physics playing tricks? Or is there something deeper, a fundamental rule we've missed? Or, and I know this sounds out there, could it be a hint of something intentional, a fingerprint left in the fabric of space-time itself? But wait, it gets weirder. In one of Webb's scans, in a patch of space so ancient it was supposed to be sterile, the telescope picked up a chemical signal that stopped scientists in their tracks. Complex organic molecules. Not just simple stuff like methane, but polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, the kind of molecules that are building blocks for amino acids, the foundation of life. These weren't tucked inside a cozy planet or swirling in a star's atmosphere. They were floating free in the void, 13 billion years old, perfectly preserved. This isn't just a chemistry problem, it's a cosmic bombshell. It means the ingredients for life weren't something that showed up late, cooked up in the warm glow of young planets. They were there almost from the start, woven into the universe's opening act. If that's true, life isn't some rare accident that happened on Earth because of a lucky break. It's a feature of the cosmos, a melody playing in the background since the first note was struck. And then there's the formation they're calling the flower. Deep in a cluster of ancient galaxies, Webb spotted six galaxies arranged in a perfect pattern, like petals around a central core, spinning in synchronized orbits. It's not just pretty, it's uncanny. No natural model can fully explain it. Gravitational lensing? Maybe. Quantum turbulence from the early universe? Could be. But the precision, the symmetry, it's almost too perfect, like a sculpture carved into the cosmos when the universe was still cooling. Some scientists are whispering about possibilities they'd never dare say out loud a decade ago. A marker. A signal. Something left for us to find, waiting until we had the eyes to see it. I know, it sounds like science fiction, but when you're staring at a 13-billion-year-old cosmic flower that defies every rule, fiction starts feeling a little too real. Now, here's the part that might keep you up at night. Some physicists are starting to wonder if the act of looking at these ancient galaxies is doing more than just revealing them. There's this idea in quantum physics called the observer effect. When you measure something, you change it. Particles behave differently when watched. What if that doesn't stop at particles? What if the universe, on some level we can't grasp, is responsive to our gaze? Webb's images are so sharp, so detailed, that a few researchers are noticing oddities. Some patterns seem to shift slightly depending on how the data is processed. It's subtle, barely there, but enough to make you wonder. Are we just seeing the past, or are we somehow part of it? Did building web, pointing it at the dawn of time, do more than capture light? Did it wake something up? I know, it's a stretch, but when every observation screams impossible, you start questioning what possible even means. So here we are, standing at the edge of everything we thought we knew. The James Webb Space Telescope didn't just show us galaxies or black holes or molecules. It showed us a universe that's not playing by our rules. It's too complex, too structured, too alive. It's like we opened a door expecting a quiet room and found a city in full swing, lights blazing, streets buzzing, and a faint whisper asking, what took you so long? The implications are staggering. If galaxies were thriving for 100 million years after the Big Bang, maybe the universe didn't start simple and grow complex. Maybe complexity was the starting line. If life's ingredients were there from the beginning, maybe we're not a fluke but a plan. 
And if those patterns, those perfect formations, are more than chance, maybe the universe has been waiting for us to notice it. This isn't just about stars or science. It's about us. About what it means to be here, asking questions, building machines to chase answers. Webb didn't just see the unimaginable, it unlocked it. It showed us a cosmos that might be more than a machine, more than a collection of particles and forces. It might be a story, one we're only just starting to read. And the scariest part? It might be reading us back. So what do we do now? We keep looking. We keep asking. Because every new image, every new signal might be the next clue. The universe isn't silent anymore. It's whispering. And we're finally listening. What do you think it's trying to say? Share your thoughts. Tell someone about this. Because the next piece of the puzzle might already be on its way.